All right. Well, without further ado, we are going to go ahead and switch gears and get our students out here on the panel so they can talk to us about how they uh, about how they feel about OER in the classroom. And we will have uh, Dr. Robert Hassel help lead that discussion. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Apadu. I am so excited today. And the reason why I'm so excited today is because we actually get to hear from the students. And before I get started with today's panel, I wanna take the time to give special thanks to Dr. Melton, Dr. Chislam, Dr. Bartley, Dr. Apadu, Ike, Michaela, and Trina. Uh, this uh, particular uh, phase in my OER journey was absolutely phenomenal. And I did not know at the beginning of this semester that I would be given a task uh, at an institution that I work for, American Baptist College, to one, design a brand new course in their general studies program and to implement this course using open education resources. And I am so excited to tell you guys that the OER spirit has transferred all the way over to 1800 Baptist World Center Drive there on the Holy Hill at American Baptist College. Uh, it is an exciting time. We have ushered uh, in a new wave of innovation and progress. And I'm excited uh, because as the hip hop artist would say, I got my people with me today. Uh, <laughs> people that are from my actual course, which is the English 203 course, which is the cultural writings course. And to give you a little bit of context about what you're gonna hear from students today, uh, cultural writings is an upper level a division course in the general studies branch of the curriculum at American Baptist College. Uh, this literature course gives students access to historical and emergent traditions of literature, culture, and thought. Through critical interpretation and dialogue, students are able to see how language mediated through text arranges and allows difference in learning and ways of living. So I have several of my students that are here today. I have for my cultural writings course, I have Mr. Terrence Haley, Mr. Cyrus Wilson, Mr. Crenson Robinson, Ms. Brittany Joy, and Mr. Daryl Duffy here with us to give you perspectives on uh, the OER in the classroom experience. Now, let me tell you, uh, anytime you go in and tell the vice president and academic dean that you are not gonna use the textbook, you better have your reasons why. And I wanna give a shout out to uh, our vice president and chief of staff, Dr. Phyllis Hildreth and our vice president and academic dean there at American Baptist College, Dr. Phoebe Dickerson for allowing me to champion this and do something that no one has ever done before. And let me tell you, it was a history making moment on the Hill. And so I'm excited to begin this discussion by starting off asking uh, any of my particular students, uh, they can unmute and develop, and you can ask them questions as well uh, concerning their OER journey. And this is how we'll facilitate the, the conversation. And after you hear their responses, uh, they can unmute and ask you. They're on here, so they know that they can unmute and respond accordingly. So the first question I want to ask uh, to the people that are online, and I'll ask Brittany this question because she's here. What was the added benefit of using OER in this class and how did it take the stress away from purchasing actual textbooks? Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, Professor Hassel, I knew you were gonna get me, but it's okay. Um, for me, the stress that this class took off of me, uh, being a single parent, a full-time student, and working a full-time job, and being a suicide prevention advocate, I have a lot on my plate. So to figure out, okay, how am I gonna manage another class, an English class, and how am I going to produce the resources that I need? I need a book. I need this. I need that. Uh, but when I found out there was no book, that was probably the happiest moment for me. Um, and it was just, it wasn't because I didn't have to spend money. It's because it put me in a place to where, like, I had to really be open to understanding what I was about to learn. And for me, the benefit of it was most of the things that he taught us were all firsthand. It wasn't something somebody wrote in a book 30 years ago and I can't go back and ask them. I can't go back and look for it. Um, he emphasized the importance of firsthand information. Um, when you can go back and you can really search it and it made me realize that he has to have a heart for this as well because he had to look for it and he took the time and effort to do that. So for me, that was a great benefit. It also made me feel like he actually cared. It wasn't, he got a book read over, pulled out a couple of things and said, learn it. He took the time to actually develop something and to actually teach it to where 
it was relatable and it's something that I can talk to anybody about and now be confident in knowing, hey, I can give you information that you can find yourself. You don't have to just listen to me, but you can find it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brittany, uh, for that perspective. Guess what? We not only have American Baptist College in the house, but we have the land of gold and sunshine, 3500 John A. Merritt Boulevard in the house. We have with us today as well. Let me get the, the names here. We have uh, we have students from Dr. Melton's class. Now that class is the class to be in because they have the tech guru there. We have Ajua, Alpadu, and David Moss. But uh, we're going to introduce those. We're introducing those. But for any of our students that are on the panel, I want to ask this question, and any of y'all can go out there and grab it because it's it's a go get it, right? Um, what type of assignments were the most thought provoking for you using OER? Anybody? Oh, I'm sorry, y'all, but the Django assignment was the most. I have never had to think so much about an assignment. I usually just read it and I'm ready to answer. But having to explain the background, the backstory, all of the little innuendos of Django and its, its background, the language and what it was in, what its intention was, that really put things in perspective for me. I really had to, it took me some time. There wasn't a one day assignment. I had to come back a couple of times, do a couple of edits because I realized it wasn't really what it was in the front. It was more to it. But you did challenge me in processing that. Absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone I, else? I have one question, Miss Joy. And you mentioned that um, it wasn't about the money for you. For when some of us started school, books came three, four weeks later after school started. How did you feel having access to your material before you started? Listen, it's, it's nothing better than, you know the saying, when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. At that moment, I felt like I was ready. I, 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 I was ready, just sign me up, I'm here. I, I didn't have to get ready. I felt like whatever I had been doing, I was just, let's go, I'm here, let's do it. So that, it's a good feeling when you don't have to be apprehensive about, okay, what's this book gonna say? Is it gonna have some exclusive things? Is it gonna kind of tackle me a little bit? But I mean, it perfect for me. And so what did you say to your other classmates, your other colleagues? What did you say to them when they walk around carrying books? And, 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 you, and you have resources for free. Do I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I do. What y'all reading? Oh, no, we don't have no book in our class. <laughs> y'all should try it. We don't have no book. What book y'all reading? Was it high? Did you get it on time? What book? I got a pen. I got a paper. That's what I got. Mm-hmm. And I, you, I just want to echo rushed, that. You didn't feel rushed with getting assignments because you already had that right there. Right there. Right. I, I just want to echo. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to echo on that just a little bit. You are more prepared for the, the course assignments because you have the resources available to you right away. So I am so excited. This is so, this is a game changer. This is innovative. I'm excited. Absolutely. So as you can see, uh, OER is changing not just uh, the lives of students, but it's changing their experiences in the classroom. And I think one of the most powerful things for uh, to be engulfed in that experience and to lead people through innovative and transformative learning is the ability for them to have the excitement about learning. Uh, it's one thing to have to come to a classroom and they can testify our class is from 645 until 915 every Tuesday. So you can imagine after working all day, uh, sometimes going through just the rigors of life, some of them actually have children, et cetera. Uh, you really gotta love what you're coming to learn in order to be that attentive that late at night. So I wanna say kudos uh, to the students and I'm glad that this OER, OER journey uh, has been beneficial for you in this space. Let's hear from the TSU students. I know that the course with Dr. Melton, because I've had a chance to get in there when she's talking about the new tech. Let me tell you, Dr. Melton has technology 
for every situation in life. Absolutely. I mean, if you cut your finger, you got a digital Band-Aid, like literally. So I want to hear, uh, I'm interested to hear what that experience was like in Dr. Melton's class, the types of technology, and most importantly, here's a question that I have for you guys that were in Dr. Melton's class. How did what you learned this year using OER and technology in her course connect with other content areas and real life scenarios that you actually encountered? How y'all doing today? I can go first with that one because uh, some of the some of the tech stuff that I learned in her class it connected me because I do uh, the stock market. So some of the things and some of the gadgets that she presented and, and and got me got me the saying what if what if I looked at this what if I looked at that and it got me towards other things. But I used it for for my benefit for the stock market to get into things that I knew it could help me with in tech or to different situations that I knew it could put me in that I learned in that class. But I used it. I use those terms for the stock market. You know, took it out of the esports class that we did, and I use some of the stuff for the stock market, and it, it really worked out. It's, it's a real effective, a real effective method. I really liked it. And then, as far as Dr. Mullen's class, all oh, the technology was great. Like you said, if you want it, she got it. The refrigerator with the stuff on the door, the shirts that you had to put the skin up to. I mean, everything. It was great. The, you could see the lungs and stuff. It was. Uh, it was the glasses. I mean. It was so much stuff, you know, it was so many kids, the, the dog baby, the cry, it was everything. If you could imagine it, it was there. And I just love the fact of the what if, because I took that with me everywhere and I apply that what if to everything I do. If it was one thing I got out of that, it was the what if, because you could take that what if and put it to any situation in life and make it happen. Because what if, you know what I mean? It could be you in those situations. It could be you coming up with the new uh, app or the new game or the new, you know, the the game that's like Candy Crush says out a billion. That could be you, you know. And then um, with the OER, it, it, the classes, I liked it because it was videos and it wasn't like all oh, books. So I got to be, you know, I got to spend, one, I got to spend money on uh, other stuff because it was free. So, you know, you have money out there, but it helped, uh, it helped us in that, uh, in that class collab with other students. So it wasn't a book in a way. It was videos. It was other. So we had time to do other stuff to mingle with the other students. So, you know what I mean? You wasn't always trapped in a book. And, you know, it's better sometimes being a visual learner, you know, so I really appreciated everything. Yes, and I'm definitely a visual learner. And I will say when I was in school and when I had books, it was so boring. It's like I couldn't comprehend. But when I experienced Dr. Melton's class, yes, I'm going to say it, it was a whole new different world. And then when you look at our kids today, it's like their world. It's like their generation and it comes easy to them. So we're kind of like trying to jump in there and understand the technology today. OER is like that. When you go into the technology, it's so broad. It's so, it's you learning so much stuff like Dr. Melton with the nails and, and you know the shirt and all of that stuff. But when you go into OER, it is a whole new world. I mean, it's, it's like it opens up. If you click on OER and start researching, you'll start looking at, just tell a student, go out on OER, go out on Merlot and go out on those libraries and then they'll start clicking. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God, I didn't know this was out there. Then they can sit there and look at videos and it's all for free. So I think uh, word of mouth, just by being a student to say, look, if you study and do this and look at this and go out on OER, you'd be surprised of the learning because you're getting it firsthand and it's new stuff that's out there. So I just had to add that. Yes, thank you very much. And I want to add to that, Dr. Chisholm, I, what I liked about OER is not only pertaining to your oh, classwork, but as I was previously working with the Nashville Fire Department, there was information out there about fires, about uh, inspecting, about uh, building a code. It was a lot of stuff out there that I saw once Dr. Melton introduced OER to me. So it's pertinent information that you can use, like Dr. Chisholm said, for this current time uh, that we're in, not for a yesterday time, but for, because I'm hands-on too. So when I see it, it, it brings more to, to the table for me. Hi, and um, sorry, my name is Ajwa Ampadu. Uh, I just would just like to share, I was also in the eSports course and I got to audit the technology, new technology with uh, Dr. Melton's course. And honestly, I, I live in Washington state. So, you know, going to an HBCU is very important to me, but it's not always accessible um, just on wherever I'm living at the time. So having these courses um, that allow you to be remote and 
accessible, be able to communicate and um, be a part of this academic um, space is really such a, a wonderful and brilliant experience that I'm, I just can't wait to see how much it grows going forward. Um, but again, also what Brittany Joy um, shared, it's it's wonderful to not have to, you know, it's not about the money, not having to, you know, buy the book, but it's really about just bringing yourself, your your mind is what you're bringing to the table and, you know, everything else is, is in the back of your pocket. You can just carry X amount of books on your phone. And so that's just such a relieving um, feeling. Um, and also to piggyback off of what Mr. Moss was sharing, it's just a wonderful experience to be able to collaborate and bring these uh bring this field. I work in the field of drinking water or water ecology. And so um, in the course with um, eSports, we were actually, our final project was asking us how are we going to pretty much push this forward in our, in our individual fields. And that really opened up a whole new world for me also because there's so much going on with data science. Um, we're collecting and collecting all this data as far as environmental uh, data points throughout the, in the oceans and in our waterways. Um, so finding new ways for us to even collaborate globally um, with other organizations and other schools, but also having resources to, um, or sharing resources globally, being able to access all of these materials that would otherwise be difficult for us to, to find, or we might have to pay money, you know, to get publications in order to read up on, you know, the most recent publications or, um, you know, topics of the field. So it's just been such a great experience being able to see how education is really opening up and really kind of uh, closing the gap of a classist kind of society where you have to have a lot of money or go into a lot of debt in order to expand your mind. So it's such a wonderful thing to see like this is um, more accessible for everybody. And again, me being all the way across the country, um, it's just, I, I felt like it was just a uh, an olive branch to invite more people into these into our environment into our communities. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you hear this? OER knows no distance, infinite possibilities, infinite outcomes, and guess what? It is changing the way our students are learning. And guess what? They are getting it. They are getting it. And guess what? I don't know about you, but I feel like a teacher or instructor with superpowers. Yeah, I feel like Miss Frizzle, like go in there, get messy, make mistakes and have fun learning. Guess what? But that's not all. That's not all. That's not all. That's not all. We have a non-traditional student on our call today that has experienced OER. And I think that it's going to be so significant that you hear the perspective of a non-traditional student uh, that is up in age so that you know that OER is not just for the, the younger demographic, but to hear somebody who's actually used OER that's from a different generation than the current populations that we serve. Mr. Terrence Haley is on the line. And I want you to tell us about your OER experience and how you've tried to manage, how you've navigated that space as a non-traditional student in your institution's context. Man, it's been a, uh, uh, it's been God's glory for me. Uh, buying books and not using some of the books that you buy. Some of the teachers would have you buy three or four books and you may use one of them and may not even finish that one. Uh, Buying book cake, buying bookcases can get costly. Uh, buying bookcases that if you have a hoarder that lives with you, my wife, that puts everything on a bookcase is supposed to be on a bookcase, it takes up your space capability. With this OER, it's uh been mind blowing. I love the rebel way that Dr. Hassel has uh taught the cultural writing class to us. Uh, I'm from Nashville, and the Municipal Auditorium was the place for concerts back in the day. And it was also the place for uh, social weed smoking. And we'd see uh, George Clinton, uh, we're in a, a section called Afrofuturism right now. And that thought never hit me until last week. But not even knowing that we were in the middle of it, that 
George Clinton actually had something to say besides the music that uh, we were vibing to. Uh, good evening. Do not adjust your radios. Uh, those things. Chocolate City. Uh, the Mothership Connection. Never had a real big understanding that we were going into Afrofuturism until I took this class and also that I didn't have to buy any books about it because we have a lot of uh, uh, contemporary artists now that uh, that express Afrofuturism in their music, such as Jonelle Minet. Uh, Jonelle, Jane, I can't even pronounce the name. Jonelle Minet, I like her, but I even understand the music better. Uh, I like watching Atlanta. I even uh, understand watching Atlanta better. See so how the affordability, the engagement that he gives us the freedom to speak speak up about uh, has helped me a whole lot. I'm a student that came to school, to a college at 58 years old, not knowing what I was getting into. And OER has been a straight blessing for me. I didn't even know that I wasn't pronouncing words right or doing English right until I got into Dr. Hassel's class. A uh, lot better at it, a lot better at it. Thank you, Dr. Hassel. Thank you for the models. Uh, teachers and facilitators that we have here today. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Haley. Thank you so much, Mr. Haley. Can, I, can we give him a hand? I want us to give him and it, give him a hand because it takes courage to be up in age uh, and navigate technology. Uh, and, not, and he has yeah. uh, shown <laughs> diligence. He's shown a tremendous amount of courage. Uh, and he has really uh, come into the space, came out swinging. Uh, and now, you know, he's one of what? The cool kids, as we would call it, right? Yes. But as you can see, uh, it's been an exciting journey. I, do we have any questions? We uh, do have the, a hand yeah. raised, uh, Mr. Duffy. Xavier Duffy. Yes, I'm sorry. I just wanted to uh, make a comment from my personal um, experience. Um, the thing that I loved about it, especially for the specific course, cultural writings, was that it gave us added information. Um, I've, I've taken similar courses throughout the years and um, I can't hear Mr. Uh, did I, there you go. There you can, go. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, yes sir. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, someone, uh, someone was calling. Um, but, but I just want to uh, say that yeah, it gave us that same, it didn't give us that same level of information and history and that same uh, face of and perspective on, especially from our specific course. And so I think the added information kind of, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, the added information kind of helped the, we, we would literally be on discussions for 30 minutes for, um, you know, just some of the information that we that we were given. And so I think that had everything to do with the different uh, styles and types of writings that we um, that we were looking at. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Duffy. Uh, 